Hey guys, in this video, we're going to explain how to actually use abilities on all those disciplines and items that we just went over. So in Madara, an ability is any piece of text written in the ability section of a card. Nearly every card has an ability section printed on them. So adventure cards, combatant cards, discipline cards, item cards, upgrade cards, basically all of our cards in the game uh, have an ability text uh, printed on them, at least most of them. Combatant cards, so as a refresher, cards that look like this, may only use abilities printed on their own associated card, while adventurers may only use abilities printed on their own associated cards as well. But in the case of adventurers, this would also include uh, item cards they have equipped or disciplines they've learned. Unless they say otherwise, an adventurer or combatant may only use an ability they control during their turn. So, for example, since it doesn't say otherwise, this Vitality Drink can only be used to heal yourself or an adjacent adventurer during your turn. If an ability can be used during another time, it will specifically say when directly on the card. So, for example, the Badass Leather Jacket has an exhaust ability that can be used while making a dodge. Alternatively, uh, some abilities can be used whenever you'd like. An example of this is the Bottled Blessing consumable item. This card specifically says it can be used at any time to do one of the following effects. Lastly, some cards might have abilities that grant actions that can only be used outside of your turn, such as dodge. In these cases, you can use those abilities when you could normally take the corresponding action. In addition to only being usable during your turn or when they say they can specifically be used, abilities will always have conditions. An adventurer or combatant may only use an ability they control when that ability's conditions are met. There are four types of conditions in Madara. There's condition tags, stamina point costs, text conditions, and symbol conditions. Condition tags are black boxes listed above abilities. In this example, the level 1 discipline for Bode has a condition tag that requires the adventurer to exhaust the card to use it. Uh, there are a variety of other condition tags too, like discard and passive. You can check how each tag works using the condition tag section in the rulebook, but for now, let's just explain how this condition tag works specifically. Exhausting in Madara means to simply turn the card sideways to indicate that the ability has been used but otherwise has no other cost associated with it. At the start of each turn, players will unexhaust their cards, allowing them to use abilities with the exhaust condition once per turn. This means that you can use Forbode to reroll dice once per turn at no cost other than exhausting it, as that is the only condition on the ability. In addition, as mentioned before, since Forbode specifically says you can use it at any time, you could use this to reroll dice even when it's not your turn. The next condition we want to talk about is stamina point cost. A stamina point cost looks like this, with each red dot meaning that it costs one or more stamina points. In this example, Whirlwind costs two stamina points. This means that to use the ability printed on that discipline, the adventurer would have to spend the listed amount of stamina points. Assuming the ability doesn't have any other conditions that prohibit using it multiple times, like Whirlwind here, an adventurer could use this ability as many times as they have stamina points to spend, meaning that if you had four stamina points, you could use Whirlwind twice in a single turn. Text conditions are another condition type. These are any condition or requirement that is printed in the text of the ability itself. This will be explicit and different from ability to ability. So, for example, blade works can only be used if you have two one-handed melee weapons equipped. This is a text condition. It's important to note that being able to use the ability has nothing to do with whether or not an adventurer can spend XP to actually learn the discipline it's printed on. In fact, you could spend XP to learn blade works and only equip giant warhammers or something, but you'd be wasting XP on taking blade works unless you planned on switching up your gear later on. The last type of condition in Madara is symbol conditions. A symbol condition will always have one of three types of symbols printed, shields, books, or bursts. They are usually printed on the bottom of weapon item cards and look like this. These symbols are also printed on the dice in Madara. When making an attack, adventurers and combatants will spend symbols rolled on these dice to use corresponding symbol abilities printed on their weapons during the spend symbols and use abilities to add damage step of an attack. 
For example, the longsword has a symbol condition that would give the adventurer who equipped it an ability that grants extra damage if they roll the required symbols during an attack. Symbol conditions and their corresponding abilities can be used as many times as an adventurer has symbols to spend, unless it says otherwise or is paired with another condition that prevents it, like exhaust. So, for example, if you had a longsword equipped, you could always spend two shields during an attack to add plus two physical damage, and if you spent four shields, you could add plus four physical damage instead. Symbol conditions can be printed on disciplines and other cards as well. In these cases, they will specify when they can be spent if it's not something that simply adds to your damage or attack roll. So, for example, Anticipated Attack is a discipline that grants the adventurer who learned it a passive ability that lets the adventurer spend two books to add plus one to his roll during a dodge. This naturally brings up another point. Some items or disciplines might have more than one condition required to use the ability. So, for example, Crumbling Time is a crewer discipline that has both a stamina point cost and a condition tack. This means that you must both spend one stamina point and exhaust the card to use the ability printed on Crumbling Time. This means that you couldn't use Crumbling Time more than once per turn, even if you had tons of stamina points to spend. Furthermore, some cards may have more than one ability printed on them. For example, Possession has both a passive ability and an exhaust ability. In these cases, the conditions for each ability will be clear. Uh, something to note, so long as it's not another condition that exhausts the card, you can still use the abilities printed on a card even when it's exhausted. So in this example, you would still gain the benefit of Possession's passive ability even when it's exhausted. Next, we're going to talk about important tags that we felt everyone should know before they start playing. While there are dozens and dozens of tags in Madara, only a few have inherent rules. Instead, most of the tags are referenced by other cards, such as when an item uses the combo condition tag. For example, the longsword has two abilities with the condition tags combo light and combo sword. The sword tag and light tag don't have any inherent rules associated with them and instead are only referenced by other abilities and condition tags. In this example, the longsword would gain a different ability depending on which tags the weapon it was paired with had. Alternatively, if it was paired with a sword that was also light, it would gain both of these abilities. The tags that might be on items that we feel players should know before starting Madara are Armor Piercing, Backstab, Finesse, Heavy, Reach, Throw, and Double. Weapons with Armor Piercing ignore the amount of armor listed next to the tag when making attacks. This can be useful when trying to take down heavily armored targets. Armor Piercing can also stack, meaning that if you have two weapons equipped with this tag, such as these two Katars, you can overcome an even higher amount of armor. Backstab is a special tag associated with daggers and other rogue-type weapons. A figure with backstab gains a significant bonus to their attack rolls and the damage they'll deal if they hit. However, this bonus only applies so long as they are flanking the target of their attack. We'll talk about flanking later on. Finesse provides a better combat dice under certain circumstances or when equipped with weapons that complement each other. For example, the longsword will upgrade its white combat dice to an orange combat dice when equipped with a light weapon. Heavy reduces an adventurer's base movement value by one for each item the adventurer has equipped with the heavy tag printed on it. In addition, the heavy tag will reduce the amount of spaces an ability or effect moves an adventurer. This means that if you had two items with the heavy tag, such as plate mail and a zombato, you'd reduce your movement value by two and couldn't be moved by slow currents and rivers. You also would reduce any push or pull effects from opponents by two. In addition, disciplines that grant free movement would also be reduced by two, making a discipline such as Like the Shadows useless to this adventurer. Reach increases the range in which you can make melee attacks. This can be useful since certain disciplines only work with melee weapons. A weapon with Reach 2, like the Halberd, would allow an adventurer to attack two spaces away. Throw is listed on various weapons and consumables. It is usually listed alongside a discard or per encounter condition tag, meaning that an adventurer will not be able to use them multiple times in an encounter. When using the throw ability, 
The adventurer chooses a target within range 4 and rolls the listed dice. Then, the adventurer simply deals the target physical damage equal to the amount rolled on the dice. The double tag is used on items that can be equipped using either the front or back of the card. Some cards, like the longsword, can be equipped in different ways, one-handed mode or two-handed mode. Other cards, like the kasuragama, can be equipped using its ranged side or its melee side. And other cards, like the wand, can even be equipped as a weapon or a relic. It's important to keep in mind that double-tagged items are the only cards that can be equipped using either side. But there are plenty of cards that have a definitive front that might flip to the back side at some point during an encounter. Uh, but they're not considered double-tagged cards. For example, the Magic Tome does not have the double tag, meaning it's meant to be equipped using its front side. However, it has an ability with a flip condition tag. This tag requires the equipped adventurer to flip the card when used. On the back side of the tome, the adventurer can spend SP to unflip the card and use the ability with the flip condition again. We'll use this mechanic with guns and all sorts of items that are intended to only be used once an encounter or once every other turn. There are a lot of tags in Madara, and we've included a list of tags in the rulebook that can be used to reference all the different ones you'll encounter as they come up. However, we feel that the tags we've mentioned make up the ones you'll encounter earliest in your adventure. The last topic we'll cover in this video is item upgrades. Item upgrades are cards that can be attached to weapons, armor, and cores that adventurers already own. This allows an adventurer to further customize their equipment. Some upgrades are marked as mundane, common, uncommon, and rare, meaning that these upgrades will be available for sale during the story rounds or buy rounds that specifically say that they are for sale. As you play through the game, new upgrades will naturally become available with new gear that also becomes available. For example, the first upgrade available in the adventure mode is the mundane upgrade called Masterwork. This upgrade has three types, one for each type of item you might want to apply it to. Depending on if masterwork is applied to a weapon, armor, or core, the effect of the upgrade will change. Other item upgrades don't list a rarity, but instead have a monster name on their back. These item upgrades can be unlocked by drawing the appropriate monster loot card dropped from the corresponding listed monster. In this way, item upgrades can also be unlocked as you play through the adventure mode. As players defeat monsters, they might draw the combatant loot card Monster Loot. If this occurs and the players draw a monster loot card with the tag Material listed on it, it means that there's a corresponding item upgrade that has been unlocked. When this happens, players will forever have the option to purchase the unlocked item upgrade during future story rounds. So, for example, if players killed the last cave sickle in a group and drew the combatant loot card Monster Loot, and then drew the chipped chitin Monster Loot card, They'd also be able to purchase the reinforced upgrade set on all future story rounds. Using the bottom of upgrade cards, you'll be able to note which upgrades are unlocked by which corresponding monster loot cards. Some final notes about item upgrade cards. First, a player is limited to one upgrade card per weapon, armor, or core. The only exception being that two-handed weapons can have two upgrade cards equipped on them. Second, the cost of applying an item upgrade is fixed depending on the rarity of the item you're upgrading. We've provided a list in the rulebook that details the costs of applying an upgrade. This means that even if the upgrade is a mundane item upgrade or a rare item upgrade, the cost of applying it to a weapon, armor, or core is the same. Lastly, when you sell an item with an item upgrade, the amount of gold doesn't change. <laughs> Unfortunately, the store doesn't see your custom work as something that adds value. All right. That does it for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time when we go over how to actually play encounters.